This is a patient referred with recurrent iris capture of the optic of a sutured CZ70BD lens. At the slit lamp, I push the lens back behind the iris, um, and I think everything's going to be okay. I place a peripheral iridotomy, but she comes back again and again with recurrent optic capture. This is despite having two patent iridotomies here, and eventually I added a third iridotomy and still had um, recurrent optic capture, uh, despite the use of pilocarpine. So a decision was made to bring her to the operating room and do a pupil sparing cerclage with a 33 gauge needle. So what I'm going to do here is make a couple of paracentesis. I actually made four paracentesis, uh, inject with a viscoelastic to uh, stabilize the anterior chamber. And the idea here is that we're going to do a pupil sparing uh, iris cerclage. Here I'm loading a 33 gauge hypodermic needle with a 10 -0 proline suture. You cannot see the needle right now, but it'll come into view quickly. The needle has been bent into a curve. I'm going to grab the uh, iris uh, margin, the sphincter, and pull a little bit, and I'm going to enter a millimeter or so behind the iris sphincter, and instead of doing a baseball stitch around the edge of the pupil, I'm going to spare the edge of the pupil and go one millimeter behind the uh, sphincter so as not to distort that. And all my passes will be a running mattress suture uh, using the 33 gauge needle uh, about one to one and a half millimeters behind the uh, iris uh, sphincter. And here I'm uh, going to grab the uh, tenopoline suture and pull this out of the lumen on my 33 gauge needle. Uh, I'll now um, loop this uh, tenopoline suture out of the paracentesis that I want to re-enter to complete the uh, continue the cerclage. So now I'm looping this out. Uh, I'm going to grab that tenoproline suture. I'm going to reload this in the 33 gauge needle and continue my cerclage. So here I'm going to enter. I'm using it my right hand to hold the hypodermic syringe that is uh, the, the needle is on the tip of, and I'm stabilizing the iris with my left hand while I pass the uh, proline suture on the needle. Uh, through the uh, iris at about one millimeter posterior to the uh, pupil margin, um, with the idea being that I want to limit the amount of dilation here to how big my uh, cerclage will be without distorting the uh, pupil margin. And I'm also hoping this will allow a little bit of sphincter function to regulate the uh, size of the pupil. Here I'm transferring the needle to my left hand so I can loop the suture out of the tip of the needle with my right hand. Uh, I'm using a mini Kugel and hook to uh, hold the uh, suture as I back the hypodermic needle out. Uh, I'll now grab the tip of the suture and pull it out of the paracentesis that I need to uh, continue uh, the cerclage with. So this will come out uh, on this side. And now I'm going to take the other half of the suture loaded in a 33 gauge needle and enter the paracentesis I started with so I can go the other 180 degrees using my right hand. Uh, it's very important when you enter not to, you know, to be very careful that you don't grab any of the uh, cornea stroma uh, because if you get hung up, that's going to be a big problem later on. So here I'm stabilizing the iris. And again, instead of doing a baseball stitch around the edge of the pupil margin. This is a running mattress suture. It is a pupil sparing suture about one millimeter posterior to the uh, uh, pupil margin. And I think that this is a very good technique if you're trying to avoid glare in a patient that you don't want to dilate too much, but uh, the pupil comes down with pilocarpine, but they can't tolerate uh, pilocarpine or they have, they have side effects or risk of uh, retina issues with it. You, this is a technique that can be used to limit the amount that they dilate um, without distorting the pupil. So here I'm going to grab the uh, suture and pull it out of the uh, hypodermic syringe, back my syringe out. I'm going to uh, now grab the uh, suture and with a 25 gauge forceps pull it out of my paracentesis. So I can continue the, the uh, cerclage. I'm going to load this into a 33 gauge needle once again. 
And this is going to be my last 90 degrees of uh, suturing. Uh, I've re entered through the paracentesis and I'm stabilizing the, um, the iris with the uh, left hand while I suture with the right. And I think this is actually a little bit more difficult to do than a baseball stitch. But I, I chose to do this in this case because the uh, iris sphincter uh, was functional and round, and I did not want to disturb or distort that. I just wanted to limit the amount of dilation so the patient could not get eye optic capture. So here we're pulling the uh, proline out. We're going to do three throws and bring this down to the uh, edge of the paracentesis. And now, uh, once I pull this down, I'm going to pull the knot into the eye and uh, grab one half of the suture outside the eye and one half inside the eye with the 25 gauge forceps. And I can now tighten the suture and bring this pupil down in pretty much exactly to the amount that I want to. And I just want to really make it so that the um, that the, the, the pupil cannot go behind the optic of the lens. So I figure three and a half millimeters will be you know, physiological, will match the other eye and prevent optic capture again. So here's my second throw to lock the knot. And then a final single throw will be done. This is the final single throw. The knot is pulled down to the paracentesis, pulled into the eye. I grab one side with the 25 gauge forceps, the other side outside the eye with the angle McPherson, cinch this down to tighten it. This is a modified Magomed technique. I'll now cut the um, Cut this inside with a 23 gauge scissor. And now we'll remove the viscoelastic. And when we remove the viscoelastic, you can see the pupil is uh, really looks quite good. It's round and the uh, sphincter is still pretty much intact. Uh, here you can see we've uh, completed removing the viscoelastic and uh, this is a comparison of how the pupil looks compared to the beginning of the case. The patient did have pilocarpine place at the beginning of the case to bring the pupil down. You can see uh, here's the end of the case, and on the right uh, was the beginning of the case, the, uh, how the eye looked. And it really looks pretty similar. Um, this is day one post-op at the slit lamp. The patient's vision was 23. The eye looked very quiet, and she was very happy with this. Thank you for your attention.